Food's got energy, right? That's why we eat. But I want you to imagine this. Say you're holding a big, juicy, big, fat, juicy burger. You're ready to, you know, eat that thing here. But before you do, think about how much of that energy, and there's a lot of it in a burger, how much of that energy is going to be stored inside of your body and how much of it is going to be wasted? Well, the truth is going to surprise you. It's not very much. Let me explain. I'm going to explain to you in this lesson where this energy goes in these uh, trophic levels. Um, let me explain what trophic levels are. They're the different levels, you know, in a, in a food chain. Let me whip out my pointer here. I'll show you where I'm, what I'm pointing at. You got the producers on the bottom and the producers are anything that's really a plant. Anything that makes its own food from the sun is called a producer. Anything that eats producers is called a primary consumer. So your horses, your cows, your sheep, um, even your insects, they all eat plants and they're called primary consumers. Anything that eats the primary consumers is called a secondary consumer. Anything that eats them is called a tertiary consumer and anything that eats the tertiary guys is called a quaternary consumer. So you see how this is all built. Now I said it's not very much energy that moves from one level to the next. The number is around 10%. 10% is stored in the body of that animal and 90% is all wasted energy. So most of everything you eat is actually wasted and only a small amount is actually stored inside of you. So let's show you let's show you what that looks like in a diagram. We got 10% moving on, 90% is gone. 10% of that will move on, 10% of that, 10% of that. So before what by the time you get to the top there's not much energy left over. Let me quantify this for you in a different way. Say you took every single producer on the planet and ate every single one of them. Every you ate every tree, you ate every blade of grass, you ate every flower, you ate all of it. How many calories would you eat? Well, the answer is a lot. In fact, you wouldn't be able to count how many zeros would be in that calories, in that calorie content. But, you know, let's simplify this down and say it's a million. Let's just say it's a million. It's far greater than a million calories. But for example here, we're going to say a million. Now, out of that million, 10% will move on to the next level. So think about it now this way. How do you get 10% of a million? Well, you can multiply it by decimal 10, right? So take out your calculator, go 1 million, turn this to a decimal, decimal 10, and multiply them. And if you do that, you get 100,000 calories. So if you were to eat every primary consumer in the world, every, every insect, every horse, every cow, every sheep, all of those, you'd only have 100,000 available for you. Now, if these guys now, how much would they have? 10% of that, which is 10,000 calories. 10% of the one above them, 1,000. And by the time you get to the top here, you've only got 100 calories available for food. Not very much. So all of the calories are going to be stored at the bottom and not very much at the top, which makes sense because you need more on the bottom to feed all this stuff above you, right? So yeah, you need enough food. Let's take a look at this pyramid of numbers and biomass and see what it's talking about. Pyramid of numbers means here's the pyramid of, you know, the trophic levels and we're going to count all of them and put them in, in this thing. You notice that what you get is a pyramid shape because the producers, if you were to count the number of producers, right, pyramid of numbers, you're going to get a lot of producers. There's a lot of grass in the world. Now add to that the trees and the flowers and, you know, um, on then the ocean plants and there's a lot of them. In fact, they rule the world. There's more of them than anything else. Above them is the primary consumers. You know, these are your horse and your sheep and your herbivores, you know, your, your insects as well. If you were to count every one of them, there would be less of them than there is grass and trees, right? Now, count all the secondary consumers. There's even less of them. Yep, less of these guys. In fact, the least amount of these guys. Now, biomass means how much do they weigh? If you were to weigh all the trees and the grass and all the, these producers, how much would they weigh? Well, they would weigh more than any other trophic level because there's so much of it. And as you move up the trophic levels, they weigh less and less and less because there's less of them. Now, this makes a lot of sense. Think about this. Why is there less tertiary consumers than, uh, you know, secondary consumers or primary consumers? 
Well, because these here, these tertiary guys, they need food. And if there's more of them than there is of their own food, well, how are they going to survive? Right? So have you ever seen a hawk eat four woodpeckers? Yeah, that's possible. But have you ever seen four hawks and only one woodpecker available for them? They wouldn't even survive. You need less of them and you need more of them to feed them, right? So that's just what it's talking about there. So remember this pyramid of numbers and biomass. I hope I didn't confuse you there. Now, where we said this energy is lost. 90% is lost. Where does it go? Well, a cow's got to do his business, right? He's got to do it, you know? And this is undigested plant material. And this is energy. Like, there's energy in this thing, and it's wasted. It's gone. It poops out. But in addition to that, there's more energy lost. Cow's got to say moo, right? That takes energy. Well, that's energy gone. It's not stored in the body. That energy it takes to say moo is poof. It's gone. Here's the key respiration every breath you take requires energy count the number of breaths you take in a day that's a lot you do it even when you're sleeping that's a lot of energy that your body uses from the food it gets just to breathe that's respiration and it's wasted energy just poof it's gone and as you're respiring you're creating body heat as well but before body heat, yep, you're creating that stuff too. That's energy. But this body heat, that's also lost energy. You know, you feel your skin, feel your skin right now, see how it's warm. Well, that's that's warmth going into the air. It's just gone. It's gone. It's going. It's not coming back inside of you. It's just leaving. And that energy, that heat came from the energy in your food. So that's where all this energy is being lost. Now, to wrap it all up, I've got one example for you. It's a challenging one. Say a tuna fish has 500 calories and it's at the top of this food chain. How many calories of these plant, these plant plankton would you need in order to feed them, to feed them, to feed them, to create him, right? You got to feed him too. How much of this will you need? Well, we can easily work backwards. The, the tuna is going to have 500 calories. What did we do in the first example? when we moved up, didn't we always multiply by decimal 10? What if we move down? We're not going to multiply by, you're going to divide by decimal 10. And if you do that, you're going to get 5,000 calories for this, 50,000 calories, 500,000 and 5 million for the plant, for the, I can't even say that, the plant plankton. It's a little tongue twister. You're going to need 5 million calories of this to feed everything above it to create a tuna fish. And that's just one tuna fish. That's just one. How many tuna fish are in the sea? Right. And that's exactly why you need so much plants. You need so many of these plants just to supply enough food for everything else above it. Thanks guys so much. I hope you learned something about energy transfer. I thank you for joining me and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>